What's going on guys, my name is Marco here from Marco's Tech Talk and today I'm pretty excited because I just got a mid-2010 MacBook Pro, a 13 inch one and I know it's like nine years old but you know that's not the point here. I picked it up on eBay for like 130 bucks. Uh, I won the auction, it's like the first one I've ever won so it's pretty exciting to me and uh, I picked it up and it's like in mint shape but it is a little bit old being that it is once again a mid-2010 so it's got a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo so that's that's pretty old school here and uh, an NVIDIA GeForce 320M graphics card. So it actually has like an independent graphics card from the CPU, at least that's what my understanding is of it. It's just, you know, not a very good one. Um, and it has four gigs of RAM, and it has, I believe, a 250 gigabyte, just standard mechanical hard drive. So we're gonna be rect rectifying a couple of those things today. Um, those are gonna be installing an SSD, and I will be upgrading the RAM at some point. I actually have it coming in, but it just wasn't in in time for the video. So, but I am going to show you guys how to change the RAM anyway, since I'm going to be in there. You could do um, the hard drive and the RAM at the same time. You have to get to the same place to get there. So, it's no big deal. It's pretty easy. So, um, yeah, guys, without further ado, we're going to hop right into the video. So, before we hop into tearing this thing down and uh, getting to its innards, I did just want to talk about it a little bit. Um, if you're someone who has never had a Mac before or just wants to get into one um, at a pretty cheap rate, uh, this one, like I said, was 130 bucks. I mean, it was an auction, so it's not like they're all going to be that priced. Not sure if you're going to win one like that or not. But this one is a mid-2010. It does not support Mac OS Mojave, um, which is the newest one as of the time of this video that's going to be coming out. I mean, that is already out, my bad. Um, Catalina is going to be the one coming out soon. But um, So it's already out of support as far as new um, software, but it does run High Sierra, which is pretty you know new at least again at the time of this video here so it is pretty cheap um, it's about the same price as one of those really cheap crappy Celeron Windows laptops granted those are running the newest OS and, and they're constantly in support at least for now um, you do have that going for you but but if you want that Mac build quality and at the end of the day you can still run Windows on here I'm pretty sure don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure this can run Windows 10 I know Windows 10 doesn't officially support older processors like anything earlier than I think Skylake or something but um, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's uh, KB Lake doesn't support anything older than Windows 10. I think that's what it is. I might be wrong with that there. But again, don't quote me on this. But I'm pretty sure you can run Windows 10 on here with Boot Camp, which is um, pretty awesome. So you can still have, a, granted, not the best hardware by today's standards, but you could still have a Mac, this build quality right here, for $130 and running Windows 10 on it. If you're just going to be checking Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, YouTube, doing some homework, stuff like that. I don't see why this won't be good for you. I really don't see why. Um, like I said, you're running the newest software. There should be really no problem with this at all. Um, again, I'm not going to be doing a video on that, at least right now. I'm not planning on doing like a Windows video on this, but um, I did just want to talk about it a little bit. I mean, and look at this I.O. we've got too. I mean, it's 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 incredible. It really is. This is USB 2.0. This the mid-2010 specifically is still USB 2.0. Um, it does have an SD card slot on it, which is awesome, and a, uh, what is this, 35 millimeter headphone jack, a display port. I believe this is before it was called Thunderbolt. Well, you know, it's totally different, but I believe, because Thunderbolt looks the same, but I think this was actually back when it was just display port, not Thunderbolt, and it, and it does appear to just be display ports. That's fine. Again, the price, the, the year, it's, you know, you really can't complain. FireWire 800 and Ethernet, and of course, my favorite feature on older Mac laptops is MagSafe. This was something that I wish they still had today. For those of you guys who don't know or didn't really care about computers back in the in the day when um, when these computers were were the new ones, before we went to the the horrible, in my opinion, computers that are um, the MacBook Pros of today with extremely limited I/O, um, we did have MagSafe, which was incredibly safe. I'll show you guys. This is actually an older MagSafe plug here, one that uh, was from like mid 2000s, late 2000s MacBook Pros and MacBooks. Um, this one in particular does work with this MacBook Pro. I'm not sure if there's like a you know like a time when these don't work or like depending on the Mac. I'm not sure about the compatibility, but for my situation, this one does work. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how this works. It's just literally magnetic, and that's it. It's connected. Um, it's green, and then it'll turn orange when it's charging because uh, the battery isn't 100% um, charged. And I did get lucky. This does appear to be a pretty new battery as well. It's only got five cycle counts, um, so that'll be nice. And uh, once we open this up, we'll see what we're dealing with, if it's an Apple battery or some kind of off-brand one. I don't really care. Again, for the price, it's fine. Um, and again, so right now it's charging. So let's say you tripped over this wire or just, just the ease of dealing with it. It just literally, like, if we just... I'll just grab it from over here that you guys can see. I'll just pull on it a little bit. Disconnected. You trip over this, your dog runs it over, your cat runs it over, your grandma runs it over, whatever it is. Rather than them tripping and the computer coming down, chances are they're not going to be falling down. 
um, and the computer's not going to be falling down because it's minimal effort to, to grab this. I mean, literally, you just touch it and it's like done, disconnected. So it's like really easy. So I don't know, you might still fall depending on, you know, your situation, but it's definitely going to be a lot better for the computer anyway, um, depending on what the situation is. So it's a pretty cool feature of them that I really wish they would have still had today because that's like innovation, man. That's that's what Apple was known for. And I, I guess they still are, but I just, I missed this, this time period here. And then, um, of course, we've got this little button you press and it shows you the charge level in dots. It goes like up to eight dots, I think. Right now we're like about halfway. Um, and then on the other side, of course, we've got our super drive back when computers actually did use disk drives more often uh, and a Kensington lock slot. And uh, other than that, though, it's pretty it's pretty sparse. It's pretty nice, clean, very nice Apple design. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. Um, very nice Apple design. It's uh, it's a little bit heavy. I think it's like five pounds, so it's a little heavy, but it's, it's honestly beautiful. I mean, uh, you can see my, my phone there. The screen's in perfect condition in this case. Again, it's all about, you know, what you find. Um, the keyboard's great, it is backlit. We'll go ahead and just boot this up real quick for you guys so you can see. Um, it is incredibly slow booting up. Let's move the camera up a little bit so you guys can see a little more of what's going on here. Um, it is incredibly slow because it is running on that two and a half inch, um, like 5400 RPM hard drive, I'm sure. Um, which is, we're gonna fix that today though. Um, again, that's the whole point of this video, or at least part of it, is that, uh, you know, we're gonna be putting this bad boy in it right here. Nice crucial SSD, 250 gigabyte. Be perfect. Um, this has a 250 in it right now, and, and I really don't even know what I'm going to do with this computer. It's just one of those things that I found are such a good deal, and uh, I just really wanted to have a Mac again, kind of have one around, um, like a personal one that's not the family shared one. So uh, this was my opportunity to get that done. So uh, I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit since it is taken. Oh, never mind. We don't have to do that. So that, that's it. It's done now. Let's type in the very creative password of password that the eBay seller did for me. And uh, as you can see, it's still taking some time loading up here. At this point, we're now in the OS, but it is a little slow. Like I just clicked the Apple, it's still thinking about it. Um, might not even come up for all we know. It might be such bad input lag with the speed it currently has that it's not even a thing. Oh, there we go, okay. But I mean, really, that's, it's awesome though, guys. It's like, old Macs are my favorite, like these older ones. Granted, a Retina one's much better. This one's still, you know, especially for the price again, it's not that bad. We do have our multi-touch glass trackpad, which I love, the back of the keyboard, but, um, yeah, but enough talking about this, guys. Let me go ahead and uh, actually break it open, and we'll go ahead and install the new hard drive, and I'll just pull the RAM out. Um, like I said, I don't have new RAM in the mail just yet. It should be here sometime today, actually, but I did want to um, get the hard drive in there and get this all set up. And that way, when the RAM does come in, I can just pop it in, and it's good to go. Um, so anyway, guys, here we go. All right, so here we go. Um, one of the things I like to do when I'm working on a, on a Mac is just, or really any computer for that matter, even my, uh, my HP I've worked on a couple times, I always take the screws out and just leave them around um, like where I've taken them out from. That way I know where they go back. Because especially on these, I know I've, I used to have a MacBook that was the same body style. Just uh, It was a mid-2012, so it was a little bit newer. I, I did sell it, though, because I, I bought that HP that you guys have seen probably on this channel. Um, the gaming laptop, that's, I kind of sold that to buy that. And I kind of regret it just because I do miss this build quality. The HP build quality, the Omen, is just just trash. i got to be honest with you guys. It's just so plasticky and finicky it's just i really miss the the beauty the beauty of these and just the craftsmanship and the the material used just just you know out of this world compared to your standard windows laptops um so anyway guys i'm just gonna go ahead and start taking these off i'll speed this up that way you guys don't have to be bored with that because it you know there's a couple screws on here so it'll be a few minutes all right so i've gone ahead and got all the screws out now i'll go ahead and take the back cover or the bottom cover off very gently because i can't remember if anything's like attached to this but it's not and wow, I mean, I mean, look at how clean this is. Someone must have cleaned this out. This is no dust at all. I mean, this this one in particular is just, I can't believe this deal. And the super drive sounds like it boots up. Like, really, like, it sounds like it makes a lot of good noise when it boots up. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, but yeah, guys, here's the inside of this. Um, I do have our motherboard, our logic board, as Apple likes to call it. Um, we have one speaker here. I don't remember if there's more than one. I can't remember for sure, but it does sound pretty good. Um, and we do have our battery here. Um, this this does actually I cannot remember what an Apple battery looks like I gotta be honest with you guys um, it's been a long time since I've been in one of these but it does seem very like OEM so to speak but again um, I don't really know I would imagine the Apple one probably has an Apple on it oh it does say designed by Apple in California um, and it does have a model number on it. it's gonna be uh, A1322 so it might be brand new it might not be I, I really don't know I gotta say but Either way, guys, um, you know, 
uh, again, you, you might not find one like this. That's the thing. It's just this is one of those things where it's not like it's a new computer where I can talk about it. Like you know, oh yeah, you should get this because again, your mileage may vary. This was you know an eBay auction. It's just you know you might not always get the same thing. You might get a better thing, a worse thing. You never know. Um, so anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and move the camera up a little bit closer so you guys can see the hard drive, how it mounts a little better, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I had to zoom in like crazy to really get a, a visual on this. And then we're just going to pull off these two little screws here, and I believe that allows the hard drive to move up freely. So let's give that a try. It's been I used to replace these hard drives for uh, people back in the day, back in like high school and stuff. Give me their MacBooks and everything, but it's been a long time, so... But I'm trying to use my memory here. I haven't looked up any guides. It's just it's been probably like five years since the last time I did one of these. So, um, but I think my memory is serving me well so far. I'm gonna move this aside. Definitely don't want to mess up what orientation this was in because it does matter. Um, get a little closer there. It's like one way is different. So I took it out this way. So I'm gonna just put it down that way. So I can put it back on. Um, we'll go ahead and move this a little bit more this way again. This does appear um, to be the original hard drive. It does have the Apple on it. Um, usually that's the original one. So let's go ahead and pull this up and out. And then mine the connector. Uh, I think you just, looks like you just do this and pull it off gently. So it's gonna be connected like this. You just wanna pull it off, I'm trying to get the best angle on it and uh, grab it. It's got this little tab here. It looks like you just pull on gently. And that's that, it's done. So you don't actually have to disconnect this. That was, um. And you don't actually need to do that. So, you know, as you can see, it doesn't actually do anything to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop it back on. And that's that. Um, so now as far as prepping the new hard drive goes, um, you do have to prep it because the way this mounts in here, um, it has these little things it sits in. And then on this side, it has these like little holes that kind of falls in and then pivots down. You do have to remove these little, um, these things here. I don't know what you really call them, but these do require, I believe, a Torx bit, which I have, I'm sure. I just have to look for it now, because I forgot about this pitfall that they have, but I'm trying to get a good visual on that for you guys. The Torx, give me a second, and uh, I'll be right back with the size. i got to test them out real quick. All right, so my little computer hardware kit, um, I did find the right size. It's going to be a Torx T6 driver. That's what, that's what we're going to use here. Um, so let me just zoom this out so you can actually get a little bit better of an idea of what we're doing here. Um, Kind of try to get a better angle for you guys. So, I mean, really all we're doing, I'm trying not to disturb my screw setup here. But I guess I could always rewatch the video. Um, if, if it's even in frame, I don't even know. But we're just going to go ahead and unscrew each of these four little things. One here, one here, and then uh, opposite side as well. There's going to be two. Take those out, and uh, I'll be right back with that too. Okay, right, so at this point, I've prepped this hard drive. It's ready to go, except for one last thing. Um, I like to always pull off the little kind of tab they have on here. You can kind of reuse it. I don't think I've ever had a problem if I remember correctly from, from the old days, but uh, basically you just want to peel this off very gently. You don't want to break anything. Um, and then make sure you got the side correct. We have to have the SATA connectors on the back. So I'm gonna do that. So it's gonna be like this. And I'm gonna just place this kind of right in the same spot. That way it makes it easy to pull this out again in the future. It's pretty OEM and that's that. So now we'll just reconnect the SATA cable. These ribbon cables I heard can actually go bad, but it's you know really easy to change. You just undo those two little screws it looks like and then pop that off over there. And I mean, so this would be the time to do that if you have any suspicion of that being a problem for you. Or if you just want to change it as preventative maintenance. But uh, you know, that's that. So that's it, it's plugged in. The hard drive is now installed as far as you know connectivity wise, but now we're just gonna place it back in there. Uh, it's back there. Grab our little thingy. I don't know what you call this, but Place that back down, like so. I'm gonna swap over to my other screwdriver. And we'll just tighten that all down. I'm not gonna go super tight yet, I just wanna make sure that they're pretty even, even pressure applied. So we'll go ahead and just torque that down. Torque that down as well, we look all good there. Don't want any rattling sounds in this thing for sure, because that would annoy the heck out of me. Not too tight, you know, there's no torque specs on a car, but at least as far as I know, there's no torque spec. But that's it, guys. The hard drive is done, or SSD in this case. That's all you have to do. It's so easy. Now, as far as the RAM goes, I did say I was going to show you guys how to do that. I'll just pull it out real quick since it's quick. You do have to take the computer apart, obviously, to this level anyway, so it's kind of one of those. You should probably do them at the same time. I was going to do that, but again, this came, this, heart, this uh, computer came in earlier than I expected, so 
I did want to at least get it set it up set up with a Mac OS and uh, on the SSD. Um, but you just pull these two little tabs here, you just push them out a tiny bit, and then that lifts up, and you just gently pull it out like so, very gently. And then that's out. We got one RAM stick out, and uh, the second one also has a set of tabs on it, but they're a little bit lower. Let's see if we can get a visual on those for you guys. It looks like, uh, yeah, they're right, right here. Uh, you kind of see, you just push those down too, like uh, down there. I think it's actually related to the same mechanism. Those pop up, and then you can pull this out as well. Um, it's definitely a little bit more tricky since it's a little bit lower. Uh, might have to, might have to finagle it out a little better. But uh, let's see here. All right, so it's a lot tougher than I remember. Um, you just have to kind of work it out, push these tabs in like very gently, kind of side to side as you can work it out. And then at that point, it comes up all the way, and then it's easy to pull it out like that. At that point, as you can see, the RAM is totally clear. Um, nothing to worry about there. Pretty straightforward. And then we're just going to put it back in since that's what we're doing. Make sure, obviously, you got your key lined up with, with what's going on in there. You want to populate your lower RAM slot first, which can be a little hard. Work it in. Work it in gently until it stops, and then just simply push down, and uh, that's it. It's now installed. Same thing with this one. Make sure it's worked in nice and gently. When it stops, gently push down. Done. RAM's done, guys. That was it. Pretty straightforward. Um, I wish I had my new RAM right now because that would have been that, but I don't yet, but that is how you replace it. It's really not hard at all. Um, these these were back when Mac when, when Apple really cared about at least on face value they cared about user serviceability unlike now they like I said it's just things are so different now with soldered RAM and soldered NVMe drives and it's just I don't know, I just I'm not a fan of all that yeah it's better maybe for making it lightweight but for the power user or someone who wants to change this out on their own they made it that much more complicated now so uh, so yeah guys. That's pretty much going to sum up the video. I'm going to put it back together. I might actually just wait for the RAM at this point, honestly, since I'm already here. I don't really want to mess with the screws again. But um, that's really all it is to it. Um, the only thing you need to make sure you do is have a backup of your hard drive. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, if you have a backup of that, you should be good to go as far as kind of transferring everything over. You need to have a Mac new enough. I think this one should have internet recovery um, to actually install OS X, because obviously now there's no more OS X on the, on the drive. So... You have to find your way of getting it on there. Internet recovery, it's super easy. You just hold like Command R while it's booting up and then it'll like give you Wi-Fi like section. It'll say, hey, type in your password and it'll just download the newest OS that it supports and it's fine, it's good to go. Um, but if you do have like a time machine backup or something, that's obviously ideal because it'll be the same. But in my case, I don't really care because like I just got this on eBay. I don't really care what's on that hard drive, you know? So, but anyway guys, yeah, it's gonna sum up the video. I appreciate you watching. Please remember to uh, like the video, comment and subscribe. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. So let's, uh, let's hit that, that mark there and we'll be good to go, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks.